I haven't made a video in quite some time. I've been very busy, kind of a unique state of affairs with me, but my job has just gotten a lot more demanding and, you know, family obligations, things like this. Um, but I'm trying to keep up. Uh, I'm still interested, still watching other people's videos, responding in the comments, stuff like that. Um, but uh, something I found that I was that was worth making a video over might provoke some interesting discussion. Um, I mentioned a long time ago that I had this sort of modus vivendi with my evangelical Christian wife, whereby um, she could live her Christian life and I would stay out of it. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't really oppose it, I suppose. But she'd have to respect my... I would, I would respect her faith if she respects my sort of profound reluctance to put any, I don't know, credence in it all, as opposed to just respecting somebody's beliefs from the outside. There's a great difference between being an outsider approaching someone else's uh, belief system with respect and acting in such a way that kind of validates that belief system or says that it's correct or um, that it's true. Um, you know, for example, uh, you have interfaith gatherings where a lot of people go and they say a Muslim might go to a interfaith uh, gathering with a Hindu. Now these are pretty diametrically opposed faith systems, whereas they're, they're not really attempting to um, join each other's religion temporarily. They're just trying to say, I don't believe what you believe, but it's okay that you believe this, uh, and I respect the fact that you believe this, and um, I want to demonstrate my respect for this. Now, this is not how I'm starting to see this deal where, you know, religion kind of creeps into my life, and it's not because of anything that anyone else has done, it just, it's my past, I suppose. Um, the subject has come up of religious instruction of my son. Uh, I already said to my wife, I'm fine with that too, but <laughs> I get to tell him exactly what I think of all of that stuff when you bring him home from church. I get to say things like, that's garbage. Um, depending on how strongly uh, the, they attempt to pound the faith into his head, probably not very strongly anymore. Not like when I was a kid. Um, my sort of deprogramming efforts might be that much more piercing. I don't think I'd be harsh with them, but, you know, just so do you, they tell you to believe all this stuff, but why? Why would you do that? And, and in that case, I wouldn't really be attacking um, the religion. I would still respect the faith of Catholics, and uh, that's the Technically, I'm a Catholic. I, I got baptized before anyone asked my permission, so I guess by the standards of these things, this makes me a Catholic. Um, you think that that's easy? Just sort of say, okay, I'm outside of it, and it has nothing to do with me, but I'm just respecting other people's beliefs. Um, it's a much more nuanced thing when you try to apply this in real life. For example... Um, if I was to take a non-proselytizing faith like, say, Judaism or Hinduism or something like this, um, and not just non-proselytizing, but where it's kind of like they don't want you to join their religion, i.e., um, we don't want just anybody filling our churches here. If you're going to come, we want to make sure that you actually mean it. You know, synagogues or temples or whatever. Uh, we want to make sure that you actually mean it. You're not just doing this for whatever reason. We, you know, it's just certain faiths just don't, as I say, block you from joining, but it's just they don't they don't go out there asking people to join. They're not interested in numbers of people that attend their churches. I could go to that. I could go sit in a in a temple and listen to or, you know, in a synagogue and be an onlooker in it all, even though I was in the middle of it all. 
because I would have the idea that, that that I was tolerating them and they were tolerating me, and there's this sort of um, modus vivendi again to use that term again between me and say the larger Jewish community or the Hindu community or the Zoroastrian community or any of these religions that don't proselytize, generally speaking. I would still keep this sense of, I guess, benign otherness, that, okay, this has nothing to do with me, but I have nothing against it. These are sort of special cases. These are non-proselytizing religions. I could probably work that out in my head. And again, when it's somebody else's religion who kind of isn't even attempting to advertise, I'd be a little bit more respectful. I wouldn't want to just say, oh, that uh, Judaism shit is just a pile of garbage for stupid people. Um, you know, I, I, I just sort of say, well, that's what people who adhere to that faith and self-identify, they, they, this is important to them, etc. Um, and generally they were willing to leave everybody else alone. But take a proselytizing religion, or a religion that just sort of believes itself to be universally valid. Um, Catholicism, uh, Evangelical Christianity, Islam, um, things like this. Now they, these are, I'm giving my brush a broad sweep here. It's not necessarily fair to say that all um, all of Christianity or Islam or even Buddhism are just out to sort of take over the world by brainwashing everybody into their cult. Uh, there are plenty of Christian and Muslim groups that operate the same way, say, as Judaism or Hinduism. It's just, well, this is what people who are strongly convinced of this message do. But we just go about our business and don't bother anybody else. But Christianity has a nasty sort of competitive edge to it. Um, I would say Muslim or Islam often does as well. And I would say Christianity often has this edge to it. Um, not always, of course. But it does sort of say that, you know, Islam and Christianity, that they make these claims of universal validity, and they are definitely aggressive proselytizing faiths. Um, Islam is currently undergoing something of a resurgence, I guess, where they're attempting to sort of proselytize or evangelize, or at least elements within the community are attempting this. And Christianity seems to be doing the same thing in much of what we call the Third World. Look at Sub-Saharan Africa and the aggressive proselytizing that... Uh, the various Christian faith groups are attempting. Um, I can't do that. <laughs> I always tell everybody that um, I can approach religion without sort of fear of getting infected by it. Um, without um, the term I usually use is haram. I don't have this sense that I'm dealing with something that is fundamentally forbidden. The devil, though, as they say, is in the details. Am I willing to go sit in a church pew uh, with my family, even though I don't believe in it at all, and maintain this kind of indulgent sort of tolerance towards it all? I don't think I can. As I said, I could go to, go to a synagogue and do that. No problem. This has nothing to do with me. This is somebody else's faith. That's their business. I have no nothing really to say about it. Um, if I were to go to a Christian church, and I, I hate to say this, but I'd feel the same way if I went to a mosque, um, I'd still get the feeling that there was something of a thin edge, thin end of a wedge, or you know, going on here. The foot in the door of, you know, the evangelical preacher who knocks on your door and you say, no, I'm not interested, and they say, wait, 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 wait. You know, I would just get that feeling that, you know, the evil bishop of Catholic sort of folklore, where his spirit would be there if I'm sitting there in the pew thinking, all right, 
I'm just doing my duty as a parent or father or whatever to sort of teach my son or um, maintain the domestic tranquility of my family by sort of bending a bit on this issue. But I'd always think that there was this ghost of the evil bishop looking there, looking at me as I sat in the pew going, uh, Welcome back, me son. I knew you'd come back. You know, I knew that one day you'd come back to Mother Church. You'd notice the Irish priest. Eh? Um, I don't think I could shake that feeling. If it was a faith that was sort of almost opposed to mine, or that was different from the one that I was raised in, fundamentally different, I could keep enough of a sense of apartness from it, to sort of, as I say, indulge it from the outside. And I would constantly maintain this sense of otherness. Um, if it was the type of faith group that wasn't interested in convincing me of anything. Um, so I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite and a bit of a bigot after all. Um, I... I think Roman Catholicism is a pile of horse shit deep down, <laughs> and I think that it's a menace to human sanity. Um, or at least I think this way on a sublogical level, on a sort of subconscious level, that's very difficult to deal with. Um, deep suspicion. And I would almost certainly feel the same way with Islam the reluctance would simply be too great for me to kind of let my guard down with, in particular, Christianity and Islam. I was toying with the idea of, well, why not just go along with this just to keep, you know, domestic peace or a sense of unity in the family, because when you have religious and irreligious in the same family, I'm sure it causes all kinds of complications. And, you know, you sort of think goodwill, um, love, all these sorts of things, uh, all these sorts of things, they militate towards tolerance and forbearance and certain self-confidence where you say, all I'm doing really here is I'm respecting what other people think. But that evil bishop would be there looking at me going, ha, 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 ha. We got you, son. You're back. Took you 40 years, but you're back. Um, I, you know, something along those lines, some paranoid kind of suspicion that's, that I was being manipulated would be kind of... I think it would be unavoidable. Um, so, in a sense, I kind of belong there with the anti-theists. Um, you know, it's... When the chips are down, I think ultimately that's the, the the side. If one is to talk about sides, and I generally don't like being pigeonholed in that way, I'm on the side of the atheists and the incredibly aggressive um, secular humanists, or whatever you want to call them, uh, the strict um, maintenance of separation between church and state, etc. Um, I have limits. My tolerance has limits. I really have no time at all for guys like Garrett Filders, but his idea of tolerating the intolerant, I like it's an interesting turn of phrase, and it's not completely devoid of validity. Um, I'll respect other people's beliefs, but only if there's a very clear line between me and those beliefs, that these do not apply to me and that there's an understanding that they will never apply to me. Um, I simply can't see the strongly proselytizing religions any other way than that. They really, or I get the sense that they really want you to join. They really want to get in here. Um, no fucking way. <laughs> um, I don't know, is this a mea culpa sort of video? 
um, is this kind of a, you know, I'm trying to sort of admit that my tolerance uh, that I always like to project outwards has definite limits and definite um, irrational limits even that if those limits were crossed yeah, I would even become angry I would even become angry and aggressive um, at least with my mind and my tongue I guess what I was going to say and what I was going to think and perhaps what I was going to do um, How do you how do you tolerate as a person who respects human difference? How do you how do you tolerate a worldview that doesn't? I'll put it that way. Now again, how do I know if the individual Catholic that I'm may you know hypothetically sitting beside in the church pew is just some person who's going through their life and you know, this is this their religion adds structure to their life. They have nothing against any other religion, and while they're an active member of the church, it doesn't really amount to mind control or <clears throat> fanaticism or anything. I'd say probably most religious people just go out of habit. But I I don't think I could shake that feeling that you know, okay, you've given us an inch, we want a mile, we want a hundred miles. In fact, we want all everything um, paranoia I don't know um, almost like a, a backhand sort of acknowledgement like acknowledgement of the power of the temptation to believe um, I think that in many ways it's in all of us we want to believe in something and that's almost that is almost haram belief in my view of things belief in anything just it it things just are a way this way because they are and faith makes it all possible that i cannot subscribe to i at least i don't think i can i'm just having really powerful feelings i'm not like it's not keeping me up at night or anything. These are just the thoughts that I'm thinking as I'm moving towards the actual possibility of coming back into day-to-day -day contact with organized religion. Um, if I'm an outsider, I'm fine. Um, if I'm an outsider, especially if I'm an outsider to a faith group that really has no interest in drawing me into itself and is just sort of acknowledging that, oh, you're just here because you respect our faith. Okay, the great, great. Okay, we'll just keep each other at, on in that sense at arm's length and everybody's happy. But if I got the impression that, you know, sooner or later we'll turn you into a proper Catholic again or a proper Buddhist, you know, whatever, we want you to join then something would sour fundamentally in me and I'm quite sure that that kind of point of view would creep up on me really fast especially in the case of Catholicism and I don't think I would ever be able to get past it there are certain things that, about one's character that go so fundamental that you, you, you can't change it no matter what you want to do um, and I think um, Christianity, especially proselytizing Christianity, is simply too much for me. Um, do what you want, organized religion, but I can never get close enough to not catcall you because I will. Um, I don't feel the need to heckle a Hindu or a, or a Jew or a uh, Jain or uh, Ismaili Muslim or any of these groups that just keep to themselves. But anybody that's claiming universal validity, I can't keep my mouth shut and I can't um, hold my tongue and be nice. At least not when it's impinging upon my real life, not my hypothetical or um, 
my theoretical life, I guess, where it's just what are your principles? You're discussing principles. I'm talking about real events in one's life. Um, it's almost to benefit my own family that I stay the hell out of any religion that takes place because I don't think that over time I would be able to restrain myself from just starting to beak off about crass hypocrisy, mind cult, uh, mind control cult, or, um, I don't know, the scheming priests and things like this. I couldn't do it. I would just have to attack. Um, and that would cause, that would be worse than useless, right? That would be, if you know you're going to do that, then stay out of it from the get-go. Um, I think I can do that easily enough. It just, it seems a shame that one can't really suspend one's bigotries quite so profoundly. I can't. <laughs> um, somebody else's religion, no problem. A religion that wants me to be it, I couldn't help but seeing as <laughs> something equivalent to the Borg. It's just not in me to see it any other way, I think. <laughs>